despite being some of the fastest cars on the road. BMW was still kind of a car for CEOs and politicians. Kind of like a car for, well, adults with good jobs. Fast, but classy. They were aspirational cars. Not exactly the people's car. But the 3 Series changed all of that. Tony Viana, Michael Briggs, Jeffrey Goddard, Roddy Turner, Dion Jaber, Peter Lance and the Black BMW. Now these little cars came out swinging, burning rubber and taking names, blowing the doors off the old boys club and screeching right into the heart of South African Nzansi culture. Hello there from the driver's seat of probably the most unique and ultimate E30 ever, the 333i. A South African favorite, a rarity to see in the flesh. Man, I look at this car and I think, wow. BMW was ahead of its time. I mean, Alpina bits in the engine and then Alpina wheels, 16 inch, uh, the MTech kit. I can't think of a better E30 out there. And this was the answer from BMW South Africa to BMW Germany's M3 E30. We all know about the M3 E30 and unfortunately we couldn't have it because of exhaust setups, because of right hand drive, left hand drive. We got this. Surely this is the better car, isn't it? It really is. <laughs> the car, uh, the triple three uh, I. I haven't seen uh, the cars for many, many years. Bern Pischitz reader, obviously a fantastic engineer. He had the idea to put the 3.2 liter engine into three series. And, and when you open the bonnet and look into it, you see that it hardly fits. And as unique as this car was, it had a partner. It had the, it had the 325 IS. These are the iconic cars. The cars that deserve the term and the name Kusheshe. Forget about Soto. Kie Kusheshe. The real Kusheshe. Man, I'm getting goosebumps. This is so beautiful. Man, this is beautiful. This is so beautiful. So, Township Streets, when you stop at the, at the stop street, there's always somebody who goes, Hola, great man! Are we shy? Immortal! Is shy? Immortal! And this is what you gotta do. Because you gotta give it to them. This is the car that any person who grew up in a township or suburbia will give a second glance. You know why? It owns the street cred, it demands it. And the nice thing about it is that people see these cars and they say, man, that's a cool guy. You know why you're a cool guy? Because you bought an E30. Drive an E30 in today's era, and you do something like this. And people go crazy. Yeah. Show, 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 Forza! They give you a thumbs up, or you drive normal, like how we're cruising now. That proper we're cruising. BMW 6 cylinder engine. We're cruising, we're cruising. And we, we're gonna get to what we are driving right now, which is a triple three. But did you think when it came off the production line at the time that this car was gonna change the game for BMW forever? Yeah. Did you think that? We realized when the cars were sold and People asking, oh, look at this car. And I used to have a 2002, but now the E30, and uh, it just took off. And so we were, we were pleased. South Africa, they just introduced Stunning Group N formula. Ah. And I thought, I want to get back into motorsport. In those years, then uh, I was included in the dealer team together with Graham Duxbury and, uh, and then Tony Viana as the lead driver. I see. As these 46 cars all queue up to go through the first corner. But with Group N, just because of the sheer number of cars, yeah. I mean, the first corner was a nightmare. You know, <laughs> yes, you, you've course. got like... There's so many cars, I've seen pictures. Yes. Four or five abreast. Yeah. And you just, you know, I'm sitting in control tower, looking down, thinking, oh my God. <laughs> okay, survive first corner, survive first corner. Yes, okay. we survive. Now we're good to go. Now we're in the race. Yeah, now we're in the race. And so, uh, and we all raced under Winfield colors. Yes. We, 
I think the Group N totally accelerated our growth from a sort of a one-car team in the in hidden away in the free state that had no real exposure yeah. to building it up to a bigger team, um, far more professionally run. What we'd realized with that car, this is a, a secret that I'll give away now, but the, uh, the engine management system, in order to make it compliant with the local fuel at the time, yeah. there was a setting that you could actually manoeuvre or you could fix it in a position where it was good for local fuel and then the other position would be for, for normal 95 octane fuel. Okay. So in our driving or dynamometer testing of the car, we realized that if you put the, it, the, the Allen key in the, in the best position, it, for the most part it was good, but around about when you're in higher gears going along the straight, particularly at the old Carl Army, uh, you'd come round through the kink, and then you'd go up into fifth gear, and we had an Allen key position so we could manipulate it <laughs> with duct tape, and we would go into fifth gear, go in the other position, which gave us about another five or six newton meters torque. So a torque maybe going up a yeah. hill. And then we could just edge away from the opposition, and then before you get into the braking area, both turn it back, back, and then down through the gears, and that, that was your lap. <laughs> <laughs> if he looks at his mirrors, he's just got opals all around him. From the it's driveways of Santon to the streets of Soweto, the 3 Series, the Pozozo, became an instant it's cult classic. Nicknamed Kusheshe. It never gets tired. Which literally means fast as hell. The 3 Series redefined BMW's place in South African culture. The 3 Series changed all of that. These little street fighters came out swinging, burning rubber and taking names. Right in. So it was available in two options, the triple three. You could either get it in an aircon version or a non-aircon version. So if you chose aircon, you don't have power steering. But if you chose power steering, you don't have aircon. So the people that were fortunate enough to spec a 333i were the ones who got to choose how they want their E30. Both ways, if you know the uniqueness of this car, then you know how special this moment is for me right now. I'm man. I'm man. I'm With this heavy engine and the climate in South Africa, I mean, to, to choose which you don't have was quite a difficult, difficult decision. My wife had a triple three I, I think it was a cabriolet, uh, either power steering or aircon. I think she went for power steering for, for obvious, obvious reasons for a female, for a lady much better to, to have the power steering. Okay, amazing car. Schön, schön euch zu sehen. Wunderbar. Now, when you talk about a can't get, you're talking about this car. Purely and only available in South Africa. 210 units to be exact. I mean, if you can see a triple three at least once a year, you should consider yourself lucky. I'm man. I'm man. I'm man. So, me messing around and changing gears like that is because of something I forgot to mention. Isanda Semfed. The dog leg. Monkey hand. Ha! If you grew up in the streets, you know what Isanda Semfed is. If you like BMs like I do, hey. <laughs> you'll understand it's under same thing. It's moments like this that I'm happy to be alive. Oh, man, I'm so lucky. Man, I'm so lucky. Give me the sound one more time, right? Touchdown uh, BMW headquarters in Midrand. Today, I'll be chatting to the first South African CEO 
of BMW South Africa. His name's Peter. Good morning, Jacob. Peter, how's it going? This is such an awesome vehicle, and it's a dream car of mine. You like? I love it. I love it. It's an icon. It's actually the car that I think that made BMW where it is today. Well, I have to agree with you. Well, BMW South Africa, I think we're a company of firsts. Mm. Um, we were the first factory outside of Germany. So the first place that they built cars outside of Germany was BMW South Africa. We were the first with Motorplan. We invented Motorplan here in this country. Wow. And exported Motorplan as IP to BMW in Munich and to the world. And it worked. And it worked. The direct sales model. Yeah. We were the first in the BMW world to do the direct sales model as a pilot. And it's now being rolled out in Europe. So BMW definitely chooses South Africa as a, as a pioneer market to try things out. We have an IT production facility for the BMW group here in South Africa, in, in the Menland area. It was the first IT hub outside, outside BMW AG. And it serves the world with IT solutions. And I think that's because South Africans are good problem solvers. You know the, the famous saying that, you know, South African makes a plan. Yeah, there we go. And that's why they say, let's try things out there because the South Africans will make it work. We've seen a real transformation in the industry, which is great to see. But um, what really surprised me, I guess, is how how strong BMW has become as, as part of the South African culture, as a South African brand. And I think the car we're sitting in is, is the reason for that, you know, the 3 Series, uh, the E30. And, and I think the best example for that was our M-Fest. And to be honest with you, I was blown away by the number of people, young and old, who came to celebrate a sub-brand of the BMW Group, the M-Brand. And I think that's um, something very special here in South Africa. At the same time, though, you feel, uh, as a South African, you feel a real level of responsibility. Because, you know, it's like playing in front of the home crowd. Yeah, you, you want high you, standards. You've got to make sure that, that you're successful. You know, I'm the first South African CEO, and um, so I don't want to let the home side down, right? So I want to make sure that, that our performance as a team in my tenure here is the best. No pressure. Yeah, this year we celebrate 50 years here, Yeah. but I want this company to be here creating jobs, um, offering our, our fan base here uh, future products to be passionate about for the next 50 years. So I actually want to, um, as I promised, I, I need us to go to a, to a spinning event. Yes, awesome. you saw some spinning at, at M-Fest, but I mean, I don't think you've seen a, a, a spinning car spinning around a, a triple three I and a, and a Gusheshe and, and, and the likes. And if there's anything that I got to give uh, BMW SA the credit for, is supporting that. It really is important for uh, a big company like BMW South Africa to to support to support something like that. The spinning has taken the E30 alone to a forever status, if, if I could say. I'm looking forward to it, and I'll and I'll give it a go. Okay. <laughs> It may not have been designed this way, but the people of Mzansi made the 3 Series a true people's car. On any given Saturday night, you'll find a group of youngsters and not so youngsters keeping the 3 Series legend alive. <laughs> now, who would have thought this would ever happen? A whole culture that happens from spinning, from township to suburbia. People love spinning BMW. Who would have thought so many years ago that an E30 was meant to just win races and then get sold on a Monday would become a cult following like this? culture and of course the E30. But what does the 90s have in store for us? Join us again in the next episode. The 3 Series became a car for the ages, thrusting BMW front and center of the cultural conversation. With the 90s dropping like an atomic bomb, the cultural landscape would change dramatically from the relatively naive 80s sensibilities. 
Grunge, Kwaito, the internet, cell phones, CDs and boy bands exploded onto the scene and BMW would need all their wits about them to stay relevant. That beats the bands. You've watched the video. Now buy the limited edition book detailing the exceptional history of BMW in South Africa and the unique and amazing cars created here. Click on the link below to secure your copy now before they're all snapped up.